Hey everyone, it's Monica Reynolds. Thank you for getting on early. I so appreciate that. We're gonna have a great call today and I just wanted to remind you that um, put your questions in the question box and happy to answer as many as I can, wh whatever the time uh, will allow us. And so I appreciate you being on this call. I may, you may have a question that I don't cover and I'm happy to do that. This is gonna be pretty fast paced, so hang on for the ride. So we'll give everybody another 30 seconds or so and we'll start at the top of the hour because I like to start on time. All righty. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, What the Perfect Real Estate Assistant Can Do for Your Business with VP of MAPS, Monica Reynolds. Please note this webinar is being recorded and you will automatically receive the webinar recording. If you have questions for your coach, please type them into the questions box located in your webinar taskbar. Following the webinar, if you have any questions about today's call or coaching programs, please email us at fasttrack at kw.com. That's all for me, Monica, take it away. Thank you, Angel, I appreciate your help on this. So that is terrific. So, hey, good afternoon, good morning, everyone, depending on where you are in the country. I'm Monica Reynolds and I pretty much dug the well on assistance. About in the 70s and 80s, I hired my, yeah, that far back, so if you were bored. I hired my first assistant, basically got thrown out of a Cobo banker office, even though I was a top producer, because the liability of a real estate assistant was too much for them, was unheard of. And so I want you to hear that because I know that leverage is the key. Leverage is absolutely the key to the growth of the business. And you guys, the assistants on this call today, are the secret weapon. If you're an agent without an assistant, the assistant is the secret weapon that absolutely supports you and most importantly to support your clients so you can move forward okay so stephanie let's go to the next slide so why should i hire an assistant well it's all about leverage isn't it lead generation listing appointments lead follow-up writing contracts role play script practice now those all have dollar signs those are your job description that's what you're supposed to do so here's my little tip that's not on the slide when you carry a um, daytime or uh, a journal or whatever with your schedule in it, and of course, Gary carries, carries one and I like to carry one too. Uh, mine's from Bold, here it is right here. So I, as an agent, I would put a dollar sign next to the activities each day that were producing opportunities to um, have a transaction. So lead generation, listing appointments, going on those, lead follow-up, writing contracts, role play, script practice. Those all have a dollar sign. Those all will lead to business. And so I want you to hear that and think about every time you put your schedule together, where, whether it's you know digital or whatever, put dollar signs next to the activities. It's kind of funny to see what you're really working on. But that's your job description. That's your job description. All right, Steph, let's go to the next page. So what can a real estate assistant do for your business is the next page. So, you know, obviously when I say phone systems, there should be an office line coming in or a dedicated phone um, to the office com line coming in. Uh, call Gary, uh, call uh, Keller Williams here international in, in Austin, Gary doesn't answer the phone. And so you want to have a highly trained assistant who can answer an incoming call from a potential buyer and seller. And yes, I have the scripts on that. There's things that they can ask and things that they can't ask until they're licensed. So that brings up the next question. Should your assistant be licensed? Absolutely. You hire talent first and then you absolutely move to the next level and have them get licensed. I think it's great when an assistant can handle all the emails, the listing systems, closing systems, obviously CRMs, database command if you're using that opportunities in command is awesome that's where you keep all your leads your assistant can be filling that out for you all the time social media customer experience so everyone's talking about zillow zillow's the problem zillow's taking our clients no not really build a moat around your database feed it every day grow it every day send something out at least once a week and so you've got all whether it's a 33 touch a video once a month you know, making sure that you are staying in touch with your clients, because if you're not, Zillow will come get them. Um, culture. You know, the assistant is the keeper of the culture, basically, as your team grows. In win-win or no deal, integrity, 
I mean, thinking about, you know, our core beliefs and how that can incorporate into your business. Repeat and referral business. So in the class, I teach that on every single call, there's an opportunity to, that an assistant talking to a listing or talking to a pending. By the way, thanks for working with our team. We so appreciate the business. Do you know anyone right now? We think we could help um, buy or sell real estate. We'd love another great client like you. So those are all the scripts there. And obviously when somebody says something really great, then you go in for the review. Oh, thank you for noticing that. May I send you a link to blah, blah, whatever it is and say, would you give us a five-star review and mention our team? We so appreciate that. Our business is based on reviews. So that's another script. And yet the assistant is a profit center. They're not a liability when you think of the opportunities and the things that they do for you. So preparing lead generation numbers, preparing the numbers for the entire week, month, year, where are you, um, what we call the 15th protocol, is your assistant reminding you that you had a goal to take four listings and you're at one listing and it's the 15th? You know, what are we, what activities can you increase to get that? Good stuff, good stuff. All right, next slide, Miss Stephanie. So communication. So one of the critical things that when people get divorced is communication and money, right? And the same thing happens to hiring an assistant. We have to take the time as an agent to put in some protocols, some communication systems, and acknowledgements of what they're doing. So one of my favorites is a daily meeting form, which basically is a huddle for 10 to 15 minutes, no more than that once a day. Um, and basically saying, here's what I completed yesterday, the top two or three things. Here's what I'm working on today. And here are my questions. So it's fast, quick, and to the point. Now, should you as an agent call in at four o'clock in the afternoon if you can, or before that, if you've got an appointment, touching base to see how the day went? Yes, you're a team, you're a team. You spend more time with this person than you do anyone else in your life. So it's really important to do that. All right, so on the next slide that Stephanie's gonna go to, we're gonna talk about listing systems. So when you look at, the systems that you have, make them duplicatable, duplicatable and, and scalable. Meaning if you're doing 20 deals, you're doing 200 is gonna be the same thing. And that's the aha that you have once you start to put these things into place. So a pre-list package in the class, I go through that, I give good examples how to make it better. And obviously there is one on command that you can take a look at and, and spiff up. Bulletproof checklist where no one falls through the crack where the communication is stellar. So I recommend that when you have a listing, you call it every day. Well, most of us have a listing that lasts a day on the market or two days on the market, and yet they still need to be called. Um, they need that extra customer service. And so I go through all of those scripts with everyone. The bottom line is that your assistant is leveraged for you. They're contacting and they're saying things like, Hi, Bill. This is Stephanie on Monica Reynolds' team. Monica asked that I call you. Do you have a couple minutes? Now, after a while, they're going to know, hey, it's Stephanie. Monica asked that I call you. They always, Your assistant always mentions your name so that it looks like you're involved when most of the time I had no idea what was going on there because that wasn't my dollar sign. Lead generation, lead follow-up, go on appointments, write contracts, and role play. Those were my dollar signs, right? So pass the baton is the assistant's, in the assistant's first call. So I'll go through that coming up here also, but pass the baton means that you should never give a listing file to an assistant that you haven't told them about the seller. Um, they're really anxious to sell their home. There was an illness in the family. Um, they lost their job. They got a new job. It's a promotion. Are they happy or they're sad? What's the motivation? You don't wanna send your assistant into um, something that they don't, uh, unknown territory, like if it's a, challenging divorce you don't want your assistant going in oh we're so excited to help you thanks for working with us no 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 that's not going to work so you know you have to know when to use that script versus did i catch you at a good time if you have a few minutes i'd like to go through a few things so it's not a happy-go-lucky call there um showing form and script ha no you showing time i never have i never liked it and now if you use showing time zillow has your customers so i wouldn't do it I wouldn't do it. So I have a showing form and there's three questions if you wanna write these down. Question number one, is your buyer going to write an offer? Number two, what would it take for your buyer to write an offer? 
What would it take for your buyer to write an offer? And number three, which is great, how much do you think the property will sell for? Now in this fast paced market, of course, everything is, well, we're not having time to do that because it's gonna be under contract and it's selling. However, you need the systems because what goes up will come down again. So it will happen when, I don't know, and neither does Gary Keller. All I know is things are pretty fast paced right now and yet it's really, really smart to have these systems in place. So um, when you look at price improvements, uh, one of my assistants was extremely good. His name was Charlie. He was a listing manager. He was the best at getting price improvements. He was licensed. We role played it and boy, he was great. So, if, so what I'm trying to show, there's so much you can leverage, especially the stuff you don't want to do, <laughs> which was me, sign me up, right? Okay, next one. I'm going to share something fun with you. This is a just listed letter from your neighbor. So let's say today you go to your mailbox and in the mailbox is a letter from your neighbor. You see the address on the envelope and you go, wow, why is the guy across the street writing me? And so basically in my presentation, when I take a listing, I would say to the seller, thank you for signing the listing. I have a unique way to market your property so that we get the most uh, people looking at your home. So I'd like to send a letter on your behalf, describing your home, that you're moving, and then recommending that they call me if they know anyone. Sometimes we sell the house right in the neighborhood. It could be someone buying a house for the kid, the mother's moving in, into town, they wanna have her close by. There's so many things that can happen. So I said, this is a letter. So when you see this, you know, my wife and I've lived in the neighborhood for seven years. I'm the person who walks a big German shepherd. My kids go to middle school. Should you know of anyone who'd like to live in our neighborhood, please forward this information. And then those are things that are just automatically done. And so with that said, I think, you know, how do you have time as an agent to do these things? Leverage the assistant. Okay, the next slide is gonna be pass the baton. So I, I gave you a glimpse of that before, and that's motivation, kids, listing price, personality style, showing instructions, sign, brochure, referral agent, special instructions. That's a very simple form. Mine's a little bit more detailed. And I learned that uh, one time I had an assistant call someone in a difficult situation of a divorce and I didn't clue them in properly. And it was a difficult call because she was, you know, trying to recover after she had said a few things that didn't make sense in their terrible divorce. So I made sure that there's a form and I'm asking you as as agents that you take five minutes. I never filled out the form, but before I dropped the file off, Stephanie would read me the questions. Okay, what's the motivation? Do they have kids? Do they have pets? Yeah, they got a 250 pound Rottweiler named Tank. That's their kid. He has a TV of his own. He has his own bedroom. And so instead of calling, like customer service would be, would you have any pets on the premise? Instead, it's like Stephanie would say, oh my gosh, Monica mentioned Tank. What a great family member. See, that's that bridge, that extra piece that allows you to protect and put a moat around your CRM so that Zillow doesn't break in. So on the assistant's first call, you know, basically they're, they're just saying as part of our customer service, Monica asked that I called, you have a few minutes. You're always asking for permission. This call will take about 10 to 15 minutes, not usually five minutes. And I wanna go over all the things that'll happen this next week. So, and then there's a follow-up email with that. So I'm a big proponent of over-communicating. No one will leave your business and say, you guys communicate too much, I'm out of here. So when NAR and National Association of Realtors did a recent survey, 68% of the closed transactions are indifferent to using that agent again, indifferent, but the assistant can make the difference. And when they're trained correctly and you work on it and role play how they handle the calls, that's how you build that bridge of trust. That's how you build that bridge of customer for life. Okay, next page, Stephanie, closing systems. So on closing systems, you have to have a bulletproof checklist and pass the baton again, whether it's from the listing manager to the TC, or it's the buyer agent to the TC, setting expectation script, call every day, reviews and referrals. These people under contract, oh my gosh. You know, the house is sold, yet there's inspection. And sometimes there's not an inspection with the market. 
Sometimes there's appraisal contingencies and sometimes there isn't. So this is, you know, I always think these are tougher markets than just the normal market. So you want to make sure that your customer service is over the top. You never say to a client that my assistant will call you daily. You say, we will call often. And you as an agent need to call at least once a week. Your assistant is calling often. And when it comes to setting the expectations, it's about setting the expectations on the appraisal. The appraisal may come in low. That setting the expectations that the closing date may, may be a moving target. Setting the expectations, and I've got all the scripts for that, about um, the home inspection. You know, you may know that your house is in perfect condition. It's the job of the home inspector to find something. And they dig and they dig and they dig. The things we're going to be most concerned about in an inspection is if anything structural, if there's any health hazards or any code violations. So just those three things. And that's the way I look at it. All right. So we have all those conversations and yet you have to role play them. So your assistant is very clear. There's nothing like having a confident assistant sharing that the appraisal may come in um, low. And if that happens, we've got four choices and going through those choices. And so what I want you to hear is that it's all about communication to build your business and build that experience with that client. Okay, uh, reviews and referrals. Um, let's go to the... Um, uh, Okay, so sorry, Stephanie, let's go back to setting expectations for closings. So when you look at this and, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, the request for repair is meant to address items that the inspector points out potential hazards or safety concerns. When your assistant can, can speak that confidently and you've role played that with them, they've read it out loud 10, 15 times, and every time they do it, it gets easier and easier and easier and it, the confidence builds and builds and builds. So there's one for the buyer, there's one for the seller. Okay, reviews and referrals. So it's really important and the emphasis has always been lately on reviews and referrals. You know, thank you for working with our team. We so appreciate the business. May I ask you a favor? Our business is based on working with great people like you. Who do you know that's thinking about buying or selling? Thank you for thinking about that today. You know, and by the way, we need another great client like you. Who do you know right now could use our help in buying or selling in the next 30 days? I, I don't even take 30 days. I'm going to buy or sell in the next century because the market is so tough to find listings, right? And when, you know, when I'm coaching and somebody says, gosh, I can't find listings, I said, they're in your database. They're in your database. That's where you go spend time is in your database. Your database will help you. Your database will talk to you about the market and about their opportunities, go back to the database. But how do you have time to call your entire database if you're doing all this other stuff? So, you know, when you look at this, the wow experiences. So every Friday, my assistants would give me a report and you can write this down. It's called the Friday report. Number one, what did you do to move the business forward? What are five things you did to move the business forward? Okay, it could be about closings, it could be about putting together a new checklist, whatever. What'd you do to move the business forward? So at the end of the week, the assistant feels good, you feel good that things were accomplished and moving forward. So the second question is, what was your week high and week low? Week high and week low. And number three, which is very simple, what'd you do to wow a customer? So I'm, I'm putting it in all of you right now, putting for you to think about Every time you talk to a customer, how do you how do you wow them? And if you go back to our our core beliefs, win win or no deal, customer always comes first. Integrity. When you think about all you know the Y four Y four C two Ts, I always have to think about through. This is really critical for you to really think about. You know what are we doing to ensure that this client will come back to us? It's called a client for life. It's not a past client is called a client for life. So when you look at agent referrals also, so one of the things that I'm really big on too is really making sure that in command that you guys have done what you need to do to really be reaching out to top agents in different areas. Um, it's important that you request. 
that you guys are linking together. I mean, we have the biggest franchise in the country and people are moving around all the time. You should get your fair share. You should get your fair share. Okay, so if you go to the next one, which is about profitable database systems, monthly tracking of growth, monthly marketing plan, smart plan, opportunities, pipeline, Facebook ads. So what is it that you're doing to grow your database? So every single month on number one, your assistant should tell you how many completes there are. Name, address, phone number, and email. Name, address, phone number, and email. When a listing comes in, completes of the husband, completes of the wife. Now, I've had challenges in my past career where we only had the husband or we had the wife and what a mess. And so those are two separate ones. And so tracking that, and Gary says that you need to add three people every single day to your database. That's your only asset. You got to protect it. And your assistant is the best person to do that, which is so great. Uh, monthly marketing plan. So every single month, there's got to be a plan. And so this is March, not too late to start. What are you going to do for March? Then looking at next quarter, April, May, and June. Can you have a client appreciation party? I have a whole system on that, whether it's pies or a shredding party, a shredding where they drive up, drive, open up their trunk and the, the documents are shredded. There's so many great things. And yet, what are you doing this month to reach out to your clients? Once a quarter, you should be calling your entire database. So your assistant can divide those names up, create those lists for you. Um, if you're using some different services like Mojo or whatever, the, the assistant puts all that together for you. A monthly marketing plan could be a video going out, an email going out. Your assistant would be in charge of those and, and trigger dates. Like at the first, you got to do the video by the 5th because it goes out on the 10th. Things like that. And so I go through those things. Opportunities and pipeline, your assistant can be putting every single lead you have in opportunities. That is one of the best things that I love about command is the opportunities. Take a look at opportunities. Facebook ads, wow. So many agents are doing so well and the leads are costing like a dollar, dollar twenty, dollar thirty. So um, when you think about Zillow leads and what those cost you, it's a lot more money. Just saying, just saying. So we go through a whole Facebook thing too. All right. Okay, put your questions in the chat box. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. So the next one is tracking the growth of the database, which I've mentioned three per day, 60 per month, which would be awesome. You wanna organize your database by agent, team, vendor, sphere of influence, clients for life. Um, you know, obviously it's all gonna go in there, but you could have a field so you could pull those up correctly. What percentage of your business comes from your database? It should be at least 35%, and if not more with a changing market. Okay, next slide, Stephanie, lead generation. Okay, so, you have to identify the top five sources of business. What does an assistant do to help you with those? Well, first of all, identify them and then have a program that this is what we're doing. This is how we're finding business. Quarterly return on investment, ROI. So when you're looking at if you're paying for some service or you're paying for Zillow or paying for whatever, are you getting four times return? So the assistant would be tracking that. And then paying attention to market of the moment. There's so many agents right now that are calling and they're just calling calling people and saying, hey, John, it's Monica Reynolds with Keller Waves. You have a minute. I have a question for you. What is the price you'd sell your home for? And there's no hassle of selling it. And I show it to one party. What's that price of you selling your home? That causes the conversation, right? Sometimes they're way wacky and sometimes they're not so bad. But what would you do if you sold your home? Well, we really don't know. And I go, well, if you could sell your home and you could do a, a significant length of time rent back, would that be of something of interest to you? Well, yeah, probably. So that's critical. Schedule, your assistant keeps you on track on the schedule of lead generation. You know, there's two critical hours, let's say in the morning, that would be perfect for you to lead generate, nine to 11. Then you meet with your assistant at 11 o'clock for the huddle. You don't bother her or him. They don't bother you. and they, they do their top priorities, which is processing any new listing, process any new um, pending, and handling any customer requests. Budget. Oh, there's a good one. So this is a little complicated sometimes, and usually I get into this if you have a director of operations. 
but perfect real estate system is about all of the systems first. There's a 450 page policy and procedures manual, which is awesome. It gives you the foundation to build from, and then you're never hostage to anyone leaving or taking a break and coming back. You've got your systems in there documented. So I help you build that. Um, as far as budget goes, when you're hiring an assistant, um, you know, that's one budget. When it comes to lead generation, there's a budget for lead generation also. And one of the things that you want to be clear is that you're not overspending and there is a return of investment. But I go through that and I help everybody understand that in a future call. Okay, the next slide, Stephanie. Okay, so put your questions in the chat box and let me, or the question box. I'm happy to answer anything. I know I went pretty fast today. Here's the bottom line. I've been doing this for 40 years. Um, the real estate assistant is a secret weapon. If you want to grow your business, you hire an assistant. If you want to duplicate and scale your business, you put systems into place. If you want to create what we call a more balanced life, whatever that could mean, right? Then you need a real estate assistant. And so if you're new to the call and you're thinking about hiring one, gosh, you know, step into it. Just step into it. Um, so put your questions in the chat box. And yet, if you have an assistant, what are the systems that you're working on today? If I was coming to your office on Monday, which system would you not want me to see? And which ones do you have in pretty good shape? So you take one system at a time. And I go through that too about how to how to build your business and build it duplicatable, scalable, what systems to work on first. The first system to work on first are your closing systems. And you're going, why the closing systems? Because that's the last that's the last um, part of the relationship before they go off. And of course, you're going to follow up with them. You're going to put them in the database and all that. But you want to make sure that they leave you with a absolute fondness and oh this is so great what they do and oh they're awesome and I loved our, my experience versus wow I'm not going to use them again remember NAR said 68% are indifferent and that's pretty sad that's pretty sad okay Steph can you read a couple of questions tell me what you learned today come from the heart of a teacher what you learn today tell me tell me anything questions I can hear I'm going to answer okay here we go so uh, Vanessa asks, would it be okay to find leads from the MLS, specifically meaning from the expired or withdrawn list? Well, yes, but remember, <laughs> good question. Yes, you may do that. And then you've got to scrub it against the do not call list. So be very careful, be very careful. So yes, you can absolutely do that. That is absolutely what you can do. And so in this class that starts next week, I go through a whole expired program, eight letters that I would send out, FISBO program, we go through a whole bunch of lead generation um, business. Talk about probates, we go through that. And so this is a live Zoom call, and that if you use Web 100, you get $100 off, I believe, the first month. There are three calls per month. The first call is for agents only. The second and third call are for assistance. If you don't have an assistant, you want the systems. It's perfect. 25 to 35% of the calls are agents without an assistant because you want the systems. I get that. That makes sense. And then you can train your assistant. And so first, there's three calls a month. First call agent, second and third call for assistance. Everything's recorded. It's online for eight months. The course is six months long, three calls per month. It goes really fast and you end up with a 450-page policy and procedures manual. Okay, what else, Steph? Do you have a 306090 for an executive assistant? I have that for an executive assistant. I have that for a buyer agent, ISA. I have them all, I built them all. I have them all in job descriptions and schedules. So when you join the class in the hiring process, you get that. If you want the 306090 right now, um, you can email Stephanie at MonicaReynolds.com, Stephanie at MonicaReynolds.com, and she'll send you out the 30, 60, 90. I prefer not to give you all of them right off the bat because it's daunting a lot of, a lot of without me explaining what they are, but the EA one, I personally wrote that for career visioning, so it's really clear. The first 30 days is all about 
uh, the phone in the database and processing the listing. The second 30 days for an EA is about the closings and tracking numbers. And then the third, uh, then on the 90 days that last um, month there, then that's all about the marketing, social media, et cetera, and more work on the database. Okay, what's next, Steph? So are the calls recorded? They're all recorded and you have access to them two months after the call's over. So as soon as the call is over, it's recorded. You can go back and watch it as many times as you want. All the materials are there for you for eight months. So 60 days after the call's over, all the calls, all the materials are there. So we give you plenty of time to make up a call if you happen to miss. Okay, so next question is, I have hired an assistant that starts this Monday and am working on creating a task list. Would it be smart to have them organize my database first? Well, yes, databases, but I don't know the proficiency of your assistant in a database. So has she worked at CRM before or he? What is their proficiency on that? Um, what can your market center teach also? So if you're hiring an assistant, I highly recommend that you make this investment because I give the big picture, I show how valuable they are, I show the big systems of what they need to put in place. And so, yes, I mean, the first 30 days is about answering the phone, it's about the database, and it's about processing a listing. So that's the first 30 days, okay? What's next, Steph? Okay, so um, what they, we're asking a lot of is if we if they've already signed up, can they still get the hundred dollars off? And I think all they would need to do is just to email uh, maps it, right? And then yeah, the yeah, just form. just email. Uh, Angel, are you still on? Yep, just email um, fasttrack at kw.com or either maps at kw.com, and we'll get you taken care of. Yeah, we'll make that adjustment for you. Not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. All right. Okay, who's Julie wants to know. Is, if her team is not fully on command yet, would this still be a good coaching program for her director of operations? And then does the Rainmaker also take it with the assistant as well? Well, the answer to that is when you say she's a director of operations, does that mean that you have two other assistants or three other assistants? So I don't know how to answer that just yet. If you're calling your director of operations and there's one assistant, I would take this class and I would build out, if you if you don't have all the systems built out in lead generation, listing, customer experience, customer service, um, yes. Um, do I go into command deeply? No, I may give you a screenshot once on every call and tell you where to go figure out how to do it. I don't go into command, uh, but I do show some things that, that would work for what we're doing. Um, I highly recommend though that if you've got a large team and you have a director of operations and you have all your systems built, then there's two classes. The first one is the perfect real estate assistant, and then there's the perfect operations team. So if you haven't attended this one, go to this one first, get your systems in place, get your policy and procedures manual built, get your systems done, and then you go to the next class because that's a deep dive into what a director of operations does, what a listing manager does, and also what a TC does. So sometimes people call their one assistant and director of operations, and really that's an EA, if you kind of get in the lingo of Gary Keller, that the director of operations is someone who's over the buyer agents and over the admin team. Okay, what's next, Steph? Can both of my assistants attend? Yes, just put them on the call, absolutely. And then I'm gonna make a recommendation that you be on the first call every month because then you're gonna know what I'm teaching them and you can hold them accountable. A lot of agents do not attend that call. And unfortunately, I teach you how to be a great leader, a great boss and how to absolutely efficiently get everybody on board for ch these changes and building these great policy and procedures manual. So it's really important in my opinion that you um, absolutely have both of them on and then at the end of every call tell them to give you two or three things that they learned that they're going to implement don't ask for a lot because there's like they people can't keep up with me i give you a bazillion ideas 
they're all going to be manualized you can go back but just take one idea two ideas out of every call and then you're a winner you're a winner okay good what's next Steph? how much of the time is spent on systems specifically around systems 100% I think because the script's a system everything that I have is systems I'm a systems person when you have a 450 page policy and procedures manual that's systems I don't know how else to answer that I think the whole call Stephanie isn't it on systems <laughs> yeah I would say it's pretty much on systems uh, you, all you have to do is just follow the system there's there's, yeah, the, there's I, the don't, I don't I mean I don't talk about you know anything but systems you know, the first system we go through is communication. Then we go through job descriptions and schedule. Then we go through listing systems, pending systems, customer service experience systems. We go through lead generation. We go through tracking number system. So every call is about systems. So I'm a systems person. I don't like to reinvent the wheel every time. And some of the things that I have, I borrowed from some of the best agents in the world after 40 years in real estate. And I've tweaked them up or I've, I've been able to write my own. I had a seventh level team and I certainly have the systems. And in the 90s, I wrote two books on assistance um, and teams. And before anybody was doing that, Gary Keller came up to me one time at a seminar that he was attending to. And he goes, aren't you the lady that, that wrote those books? And I go, yeah. So he started asking me questions. And I said, who was that guy? And this guy says to me, well, that's Gary Keller. He's starting a franchise. And I go, oh, good luck with that. <laughs> Here I am. I work for him. Okay, good. What's next, Steph? Will this system work if I have a virtual assistant? Yes, it does. In virtuals, I've got a lot of virtual assistants who have taken this course over the years. Um, I usually have quite a few virtuals in there in every class. Um, it absolutely does because these are the systems that need to go into what I call the back end of the office. You need all these checklists, these letters that go out, all of these are systems that can be done virtually. Okay, so next is should the agent have their systems in place first before they take this class because I feel like I'm all over the place. <laughs> no, that's a great question and the answer is heck no. No, because what happens is you're going to get ready to get ready to get ready. Just come get my systems. Then you have it. It's a blueprint. These are proven systems that have worked year after year after year after year. And we constantly are tweaking the material to make it market of the moment. I have a whole bunch of COVID processes in there if you need those still. And so what I want you to hear, don't try to do it yourself. Come to the call and go, wow, that's a great checklist. I'm going to use that now. So I've got all of that done. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Mine is all a blueprint. You can tweak it from there and make it your own. So I can save you zillions of dollars and hours because then you can go sell a house and not be working on systems. Okay, what's next, Steph? Okay, so I'm in the process of forming a team with another rainmaker. I'm commercial and she is residential. Is this the right course uh, to for us to start merging and setting, getting set up together? Yeah, it really is because I've had a lot of commercial assistants. Now they're gonna have to change a few things and I've coached commercial agents before. It's still about the customer. It's still about the database. It's still about communication. And so all of those still about lead generation. So there's gonna be some tweaks in the commercial part, but you've gotta get some foundational pieces down. So it's the perfect place for you guys to be, perfect. Good question. What's next, Steph? Is there a director of operations program that starts after this coaching program? Yes. After this one is over, there's another one called the Perfect Operations Team. And so that's another six-month course where it's a deep dive into six calls on the listing manager, six calls on the TC, six calls on the director of operation. It's the perfect profile for each one of those um, um, admin and it's also um, the job descriptions a deep dive it's also the 30 60 90 for each of them which is different than an EA 30 60 90 okay what else so yes you need to go to that too because then that's the that's what everybody was asking for okay after the perfect real estate assistant I got these systems now now I'm building out my team now what well you got to hire the right people and make sure they're doing the right job and so we, we built all that okay what's next Deb? Do you have 
a system on how to hire an admin. I need help with making an ad to hire someone and where to post the ad. Okay. So yes, I have a whole hiring process in there. Of course, career visioning is another place to go. If you want an ad, email Stephanie at MonicaReynolds.com. She'll send you the ad. Um, and then also Indeed.com is a great place to go. That's where all the top producers go to find an assistant. I'm going to ask you to ask your affiliates. You don't say, do you know of anyone? You say, by Monday, I'd like you to give me two names of someone who would be a great admin for me. They can have a job. I won't mention your name, but I need two names. And then always there's your database. My team is growing. I appreciate your help. I'm looking for an executive assistant. Please pass this on to anyone you think would like a career in real estate. So there's a couple of choices there for you. I do a whole hiring process, a whole hiring process that is complement to career visioning. So if you didn't get a chance to go to career visioning, I got a process for you. Okay. Okay. A couple so, more quick questions. So okay, go uh, a follow up for um so on about the perfect operations team is if you have a doo a tc and a listing manager would it be good to take both of these programs simultaneously and then they can all grow together you know this program i would i would say to you um instead of you know when somebody wants a drink of water you don't put the fire hose down their throat so I would say make this investment in this class first to get your systems in place. And then they go on to the perfect operations team. And I love your question though. And I think what I want everyone to hear is that you're willing to invest in the education of your assistant. One, it shows them you care. Two, they care because you care. And number three, just any little thing that they hear and how they can handle a customer is gonna make such a huge improvement in their thinking. And they're not just listening to you, um, training them, they've got a third party of me that's going to say, here's what works. Take this back to your agent. See if this is something that you guys would like to do. That's a great question. Okay, what's next, Steph? Okay. So if you have no assistant or if you have a new assistant or a virtual assistant, can the agent attend all three of the calls themselves? Well, you can, but let me ask you a question. It depends. So yeah, absolutely. You can go back and listen to them. When I have agents and assistants on the same call and you guys are sitting in the same room, the assistants don't participate at a high level. They may not ask a question and I get some crazy questions. So you can always go back and listen to them. So I think if you can separate it and say, okay, my call is the first of the month, I go over everything that we're covering, and the second and third is for the assistant, and then you're asking them what you learned, you can go back and listen to it. If you're sitting in the second same room, it can be intimidating and they're they're not listening at the same level they would if they own that whole material themselves, if that makes any sense. So whether you've got a virtual, a part-time, or you haven't got assistant, this is the class where you build the systems. And this is where I have the hiring process in it also. Okay, last question, Monica. Um, are there, um, how would you, how do you keep track of all these different systems? Well, it's very simple. Okay, first of all, you know, I'm plant a tree, kill a tree. So I have a policy and procedures manual three ring binder with the systems in there that are constantly reviewed. The second thing is you're gonna keep track of them digitally. And some of them will be incorporated into your CRM. And so basically you have a checklist on a listing and you follow that checklist. And one of the things is send out the just listed letter. Another one is put an ad in Facebook. It's all in the checklist. So you're going to start to use them and then you've got the you've got your systems down there. So I hope that answers that question. All right, Steph, what else? Okay, so that's about the last question that we have available okay. right now. All right. Hey everyone, sign up. I have a lot of fun on the calls. I'd love to teach you to be a great leader. Um, if you're the agent assistants, I'd love to teach you how to absolutely support the agent and have a phenomenal career. You guys are the secret weapon, the assistants. You're the near and dear to my heart. You're my one thing and I always take your side. So come to those calls. Let's build some systems together. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Angel. Everybody have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Go sign up.